Hey guys, figured it's time to uh, pull myself up off the couch and get out of this funk I've been in here since uh, I moved and everything like that. What better way to uh, you know get in there and start playing with the comics and stuff? Um, the book I want to show you is probably one of those. It, it's a series that's actually uh, you know really uh, uh, I've got a real protective uh, state of mind about it. Sort of it's 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 actually really you know kind of important to me. When I first started reading, reading the book, I got the first four or five issues and thought the book was really slow, great art, but, you know, if it's going to be this slow paced, why, why bother, okay? Time went by and uh, some of my friends who collect the comics started telling me I needed to get this book. Um, they actually kind of said I reminded them of the character, I mean, which is flattering, I mean, the, the part of it is, is that the main character in the book... Uh, kind of like the superhero stuff was second his love was collecting and antiques and old things and things from the past and that's kind of where people started saying you know you really need to got this book you'll enjoy it because you, I sort of did the same thing I was into old toys old comics I mean we're all on here you know collect comic books and stuff so we you know you, you kind of get it but uh, you know this guy you, you know I hit flea markets and I had uh, you know records and, and old pulp novels and stuff you know much more than I have now you know this was back in 1994 up to about uh, 96 you know uh, I'm trying to think when I got married anyway but uh, you know I got the first couple of issues and around 51 it brought me back in and you'll see why here in a minute so uh, this is a complete run but I'm also going to show you a few books you need to get to have the complete uh, set of, of this character, you know, and then, and, and, you know. So let's just get on into it here, okay? The book we're talking about here is Starman. And that is not a glare, that is... There we go. Okay, Starman started, it came out of Zero Hour. I think his first actual appearance is Zero Hour number one, which I have, but I'm not going to dig it out. I'm still moving and collecting things and I want you to think of this book in terms of uh, yes this is part of the DC universe but what he did is he set him up in Opal, Opal City this was by James Robinson and Tony Harris for a majority of the series James Robinson wrote them all and I think he might have had a David Goyer come in towards the end of the series and co-plot a book or two uh, David Goyer is of, of course the screenwriter uh, for uh, I think the Blade movies and a few other things anyway Starman is sort of like Sandman, okay? One writer, a beginning, middle, and end. This is actually the uh, character growth and evolution of Jack Knight as Starman. Uh, this series also reminds me a whole lot of uh, Swamp Thing because it's almost like he took the arcs of uh, Swamp Thing from Alan Moore and applied them to his 81-issue run of uh, Starman. Uh, it kind of starts out with, it, it touches on legacy, it touches on a space story, it touches in uh, Jack Knight actually goes to hell, um, old villains and stuff pop up, um, you know, but he really expanded a whole lot on it, you know. Um, and this is one of those story books where you really just need to grab the book. It's sort of like Swamp Thing and like Sandman, Starman is its own world. He sets it up in Opal City. Opal City is actually was supposed to have been actually like its own character in this and he comes in with all these other characters and he pulls from uh, what I call probably like you know boys fiction there's a ghost pirate through there there's subplots through there there's um, all court kinds of thing and I haven't read the entire series in years so we're gonna be you know kinda of, I'll be rediscovering this the same time that I'm showing you this for you guys that don't know okay so this is Jack Knight this is a zero issue okay and this is where we kinda of get introduced to the character what it is is that this is the Golden Age Sandman's son, but he idolized his dad growing up. His mother was an artist, so he sort of took after his mother. Anything that was counter-culture, counter Jack Knight was into. He was a punk in the 70s. He was alternative in the 80s, and the whole time he's collecting these toys and things that, uh, you know, that's how he bought his first car was a box of old toys and things. But anyway, he's into Hawaiian shirts. He owns an antique shop. And the mist returns. Well, first of all, the first night out, there's a brother that Jack has, David. And we start out with Opal City, 
Tony Harris does incredible art in this. And the, his the first night out, um, Sandman, Starman's son, the Golden Age Starman, the original one, Ted Knight, his son comes out, David. First night out, he gets sniped right through the star. And this is where the beginning of Legacy comes and everything like that. And what happens is, is the mist has a daughter named Nash and a son and they're just going to Opal City and they're just raising hell on Starman's family and everything. So the first zero issue, the first issue, second issue, and I believe the third issue are all the first arc. This is where I was collecting the book and it's really kind of slow. It's building up to Jack Knight taking up the mantle. He doesn't want to do it and he's not a fighter. He actually took some kung fu in the 70s. He wears these uh, old, maybe 40s uh, welder goggles and a old leather jacket and that's his costume. He thinks the whole superhero thing is sort of silly. Yet, he worships the old Golden Age guys like uh, Alan Scott Green Lantern and everything like that. He despises like the modern heroes like Batman. The interesting thing that they pulled in is that you didn't know what was going on because all of a sudden James Robinson brought in the Shade. That old, uh, I believe, Flash villain and he fought the GSA. The Shade calls Opal City home and he's there to protect it. He, his, he, there's a whole mystery on who the Shade is and how he got his powers that he's alluding to. Alright, like I said, this is just an introduction, so we'll move along here. Alright, yeah, number three, it's a showdown between Jack and the Miss Son that he's going to do it. And we get introduced to the O'Dare family. They're kind of like the uh, a family of, uh, their dad was a cop, you know, an Irish cop. And they grew up and they all have red hair and they actually got a kind of a cowboy look to them and stuff, okay? So, Jack Knight ends up getting revenge for his brother and gets by with it with the cops running, okay? So then we get to know Jack a little bit more. We get to see his shop. He, the whole, one of the things going on in the first couple years of the book, we see him rebuilding his shop and restocking it because someone on the line and gets blown up. This is a standalone issue where, you know, we kind of get to know Jack. He, he makes a deal with his dad that if he uses his cosmic, if he uses his scientific uh, mind to stop doing like if he can make a cosmic rod then can't he use that for the better of a man if he does that he'll be the star man and in this issue his dad calls him out and says you think you can just kind of wait for the cops to call or let them handle things and he says once you start being a superhero the weirdness finds you which is just amazing you know when you read it but better executed and i'm going a yearly event in the um star man series here we have we're up to number five here is that once a year uh, in our time we get talking with David issues and this is where Jack ends up talking to his deceased brother who kind of elude things and is trying to help him figure out things and, and give him the idea of uh, what's going on behind the curtain uh, talking with David and they usually have a year this would have been talking with David 95 and then they started putting years on it talking with David 96 the whole series kind of gives you an idea that there's a flow of time and that the series is actually building up to something these Talking with David issues are just excellent. He gets to talk with his dead brother. His brother's telling him to grow up sometimes. Or his brother's trying to be... He'll bring in other dead superheroes or dead people. Trying to get, uh, you know, kind of giving Jack, our hero, you know, a heads up. And if I'm going to be doing this, I need to be doing this right. Okay, we've got number six. We start to get to know the shade a little bit. And you definitely know there's something going on with the shade. Okay, and Tony Harris's art just gets better and better at this. We get number seven, and we get a carnival, uh, idea of a carnival. And what has happened here is by now, we've had pages where we see the legacy coming in. There's going to be, he's already alluded here, at, you know, between issue four and seven here, and this went on for 80 issues, 81 issues, that we each, we see the Will Payton Starman, we see the uh, Starman uh, Michael Thomas, and uh, it actually brings up the idea of the Starman from... Uh, you know, up in space that died during crisis there. The Prince Gavin, I think. Uh-oh. Cool, we got it. Anyway, so, all this is starting to tie in. He starts tying all the star men together. And the first thing he does, he goes to a carnival, and that's where he saves Michael Thomas. He also sleeps with a lady with uh, octopus arms. Just, just saying. 
Okay, and this is where he saves uh, the blue star man. And we go on. I mean, just look, these covers are just amazing. Look at this. I mean, these covers just get better and better. You know, I really missed out when these are coming up, coming out. And, you know, superheroes carry on. I'll just hit the highlights as I remember them. And then here, this is a very good issue. We get in with Solomon Grundy. That is Solomon Grundy. Long hair. And this version of Solomon Grundy, for you guys that don't know, is every time Solomon Grundy dies, he ends up coming back with a different personality. They made him the Hulk. They made him a killer. They made him a guy who can just mumble Solomon Grundy born on a Monday. And in this one, he actually they actually become close friends. The the This personality, really rare, comes out where this is a sweet, gentle, giant kind of guy. That's the way I remember it. All right. Then we also have Time's Past Stories. This issue is just freaking amazing because you start finding out that the original Ted Knight Starman, this is a story set in the past. Ragdoll, the triple-jointed, kind of a raggedy Andy kind of character who's always sort of funny, kind of jokey, ends up being a big cult leader. Part of the background of Opal City is that you find out that this character has been martyred and it's because he was killed. He used his cult to find out who Alan Scott, Alan, uh, Green Lantern, Alan, Alan Scott, uh, Tyler, Rex Tyler here, Our Man, and Jay Garrett Flash, and our hero here, they all have families and stuff. And even though they're going to put him in jail again, he threatens them and tells them, you know, my cult will get your family, your kids will never be safe. So Starman ends up killing him. And that martyred the character, and that's why the cult goes on. Uh, Jack Knight even wore, you, you start seeing in the backgrounds of what you missed before is the Easter eggs and the issues of people are wearing uh, shirts of, um, you know, of a uh, ragdoll. And this this issue, you know, we find out he's a scientist, he's atheist, and he was the one that had, who could do it to protect everybody, killed everybody. Really great stuff. And then we start getting uh, the Shades journals in these. These are pages that are uh, in the back of the book, and it's actually his handwriting. His journals given kind of a history of Opal in the background of some of these stories. Okay. This is where we come in. This is the Miss Daughter. She comes back for revenge on Jack Knight. And I don't know if it's this issue or not, but she ends up raping Jack while he's uh, drugged up or something like that. And has his baby and tells him he's going to raise his son to hate him and to come kill him one day. Another subplot that is just amazing. Yeah, Sins of the Child, you know, Underworld Unleashed. I can't remember this one. All right, we get to, this is the O'Dares that I was telling you about, the cops in Opal City. Beautiful covers. All right, and then this is Michael Thomas, our blue uh, star man. He gets kidnapped, tortured. Him and Solomon Grundy go at it. Not go at it, but they become really close friends. And this is where his powers are more or less reactivated and he blows off the top of a building. Um, I mean, I could go on and on and get deeper into it, but this is just to kind of wet your whistle. These are all worth reading. All right. More of Nash. Sends the Child, 5 of 5. Just great covers. And then we get to Beyond Sins and stuff like that. Uh, this is a really great cover and issue. Kind of a little breather there for a minute in between arcs. We get another um, times past. They start uh, realizing these are going to be annual events. And I think this one is actually the same man in the mist first joust. The first time they met that leads up to all this. Uh, and this is also looks like we get a different artist on this one. Harris is doing this the covers, but we got somebody named John Watkiss. And then we also get our talking with David 96, a big pirate story. I think he learns about who the pirate is that's being, uh, if I remember right, sort of... Uh, you know, the, the, this ghost pirate has been popping up. And it's an, old, it's an old DC character. Okay, so, you know, he gets the little pirate adventure with his brother from the afterlife. Sand and Stars. This was an unofficial crossover uh, with the... This is where you start finding out Jack has an affinity for these Golden Age characters. I mean, you know, to him, they were around when he was a kid. And... Uh, you know, and this is actually sort of a, let me find it, The Mist. I think I'm only missing one issue. But it goes back to Matt Wagner, Steve Siegel, and Guy Davis' Sandman Mystery Theater, The Mist. You know, I can't remember what the connection is, but, uh, you know, you can get this Sandman Mystery Theater arc. It's number 37, 38, 39, 40, and it ties in with Sand and Stars, one of, one of four. And uh, he just he just kind of goes all giddy getting to work with the, the Starman. 
but Starman working with the Sandman. You know, wearing the Sandman's gear. Stars and Stripes. Just a really great story. Real personal story. You know, you get inside their heads. They have these great talks. Just great stuff. Then we get to Demon Quest. Uh, one of the subplots that you find out going all the way back to issue 4 is that there is a poster that was drawn by some man who supposedly uh, was a magician or something. And the poster actually drags people to hell. He ends up going on a Demon Quest, which I don't want to really spoil it for you. And uh, ends up in hell more or less talking to you know just an out and out demons and stuff in the odairs are all tied up in it and everything like that and then you get your little you know breather here number 27 uh sweet little christmas story really good stuff okay then we get a time's past story back in the past but this time we see michael thomas uh, Starman in the 70s, man. And this thing reads like it just was this Saturday Night Fever back in the day. Uh, I really like how they structured this story. Uh, it's almost like you were watching a movie, you know. Uh, it was just really good. And there are drugs, and then this is where you find out that Michael Thomas is sort of... He's not quite homosexual, but it's kind of like he's bisexual, but we can't judge him because he's an alien race. So there's some seedy stuff going on in here. Really, really interesting story. And I remember this cover. This was Join the Revolution. The book had gained some momentum. It had uh, sort of survived. And this was sort of like a jumping on point for everybody, you know, to get these people in there. So, you know, that, 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 this is where I know a lot of people really jumped on there because they started advertising this. Uh, what are we doing on time? Good. We'll, we'll take a break here. All right, Infernal Devices. We get a big pirate story, which is really, really cool. Moving on. Great, great covers. Jolly Roger Studios. Alright, and a little Solomon Grundy going on there in the background. Him and Jack have grown really close. And then we get uh, Dark Knights. This is where Batman comes in. And we get Alan Scott on there. He was called Sentinel at this time. And Jack was taken up for him saying he was Green Lantern first. He should be Green Lantern. And you start finding out, he tells you why he doesn't like modern things and, and modern times, and he doesn't like Batman. I mean, he despises Batman. Okay. And I think we'll stop right there. I'll make a second video here in a little bit, guys. Later.